It's Nancy Crawford back with the second part of this two-part encaustic technique video that's exploring mark making that's inspired by calligraphy, text, and handwriting. So after the first video came out, I received so many messages and emails about what piece of equipment was I using there, what was that tool, and so forth, that what I've done in addition to producing this second part of the video is I've put together a PDF file that you can download from my creativity blog um, which is called the creative commitment. So below this video, you'll see a link to that that blog and There's a, a colored PDF file that you can download. That's a great resource It shows not only the tools and that that I'm using but also there's some links to where you can purchase them So hopefully that'll help you out a bit So what you can see that I'm doing here is I'm using actually a traditional etching tool but I'm using it to scratch into the wax to create these incised lines that later I can rub ink or oil paint or different materials into to make those lines really stand out. And one of the things that I want to stress is that with any kind of tool that I'm using or any kind of technique, I'm always looking for what can I do that would make that process just a little bit different. So for example, with this one here, you can see I'm using just a flat paintbrush and here I'm painting sort of in a more traditional manner, loading the paintbrush up with lots of paint and I'm creating this really dark solid mass or shape of India ink. But if I use that same brush and I wipe off most of the ink, uh, then what I get is this very striated, lovely kind of filigree brush marks that are in some ways a lot more exciting and interesting. So same technique, the same tool but very different look to it. So you can see in this one little encaustic piece here where I've used the ink in a solid band on the side and then the striated brush stroke on the right hand side. And then that was further built up with wax and some incising of letters that have been, you know, had oil paint rubbed into them and some foil letters. Here's using that brush in combination with a pointed pen and some color. So this quote says, the art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery. And this was worked up with some watercolor washes, pan pastels, and some pigmented wax, in addition to encaustic media. Now this little tool, which is called a pipette, it's almost like a plastic eyedropper, if you can think of it. It's got a little bulbous kind of bit at the end that you can squeeze and you can suck up materials, whether it's walnut ink like I've used here, you can use watered down gouache, you can use different types of paint, and then you can do different mark making or writing and so forth. Now these tools you can find both in um, medical supply places, but you can also find them in art supply stores where they sell materials and equipment for dyeing fabric and working with fabric. So here I'm just, you know, trying to create some different effects by tapping the board and getting some drips happening. I'm spritzing it with water now to create some effects with the ink where it's light and dark. So again, just trying to get some contrast to that kind of uniform ink color. So we're back here working with the traditional calligraphy pen with a broad nib on it. And I'm compressing the text, not as much as we saw earlier in this video, but I'm taking out all the spaces from the words and just featuring the text here as almost a graphic pattern or design. And so that was working with the broad nib pen with some compressed text to create a pattern. Here I'm using cursive handwriting and a fountain pen. And we saw this technique used in the first video, but it was to create a block or a shape of text. It could be a square or a rectangle, you know, a geometric kind of shape. The other thing that you can do is just take some of these random shapes or gratuitous areas that you've got in your pieces of artwork and use, the, use text as a way to create pattern and design that's maybe a little bit more arbitrary. So with those small uh, pieces of mat board that I, you've seen me working up, 
they actually are all cut from larger pieces of map board that I usually mark up with text or quotes or words. And you can see here that I've been using that striated brush effect, writing out some large words. Here I'm using water, just writing that word out. And I've just actually spritzed it with a little bottle of India ink. And where that ink hits the water, you just get these beautiful, immediate patterns that are very surprising and delightful. Here's a close-up of that. I mean, that's so exciting, and you wouldn't be able to achieve that sort of on your own. Here's another interesting technique. working with there is actually just a simple piece of balsa wood and while I'm drawing letter forms here you can use balsa wood to just draw make marks you can get some beautiful expressive wonderful textures and qualities of lines and marks in your image making just by you know really getting innovative and changing up your tools and, and sometimes more simple or basic the better um, one of the things that I haven't featured too much in this video, which is really exciting, is to make your own tools and equipment using things found in nature or using things that you find around your house. So here I've changed the orientation of that large sheet of map board after I've written up large words that are part of a quote that I'm featuring. And I'm just working with a brush felt pen to write out the full quote. And I start with this sort of, you know, working out the spacing and the design of the quote, which I'm going to work up a little bit further now. So one of the things that I like to do is there's the traditional way that you can use a tool sort of as it's intended. And then there's other ways that you can innovate or work with the tool and so this is using an automatic pen with the texture of the paper to create some really kind of surprising and kind of splattered and, and random effects. And I owe this fun and surprising technique to Birgit Ness. So I hope you'll try out some of these techniques and processes to help you express your ideas. Happy creating!